Gees and How Deep Is Your Love on BBC Radio Leeds. 26 minutes away, I apologise, it's 24 minutes away from 10 o'clock on a Monday morning. Uh, you're listening to Richard Stead. How many times did you hear the phrase, uh, a dog is for life, not just for Christmas over the last month? Well, not enough for some people because the owners of one West Yorkshire dog dumped their new puppy on Boxing Day. West Yorkshire Dog Rescue were contacted the day after Christmas by the owners of a Cairn Terrier puppy who bought the dog two days earlier on Christmas Eve. And Cathy Trout from the charity says the phone has hardly stopped ringing since Christmas. Cathy joins me now. Morning, Cathy. Oh, good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for having me here. Yeah, no, Happy New Year to you. Um, but we, we say this phrase, uh, we, all, last last couple of weeks we've done features here on BBC Radio Leeds at, at the Dogs Trust and the like about a dog for life, not just for Christmas, but has this message got through, Cathy? Well, a dog is a commodity. It's a disposable item to many people. They don't see that it has feelings, emotions and a very deep soul. And I'm not being sentimental when I say that. There's scientific proof to, to demonstrate that dogs form extremely close attachments to humans. But, unfortunately, people don't think carefully enough about the issues regarding dog ownership. And what are those issues? Well, basically, the commitment that you need for the next 16 years. Not what is considered to be OK now... But how are you going to keep this dog for the next 16 years through all of your lifestyle changes? And the cost can be quite phenomenal when you think about around about £1,000 a year, which amounts to £16,000 over the life of a 16-year dog. And these things are not considered. And when somebody gets a dog, um, typically at Christmas as a present, they don't think about the difficulties of house training a puppy, a puppy will chew everything. I mean, they're a nuisance, puppies, you know? What's it been like at West Yorkshire Dog Rescue over the past couple of weeks? Well, leading up to Christmas, for the three weeks leading up to Christmas and for a couple of months after Christmas, the phone never stops ringing. And if you can understand how that feels as a caring voluntary worker in a charity that wants to help dogs, the emotional strain of having 70 people a day telling you their personal problems and you know that at the end of this tragedy there is a dog and when you cannot do enough to help, the strain is amazing. You know, the emotional strain, my blood pressure, I have mouth ulcers, you cannot underestimate the strain on, on charity workers around Christmas. Cathy, forgive me, I thought for a moment you said 70 calls a day there. I know, silly, isn't it? I mean, we normally get 40 calls a day. 70... Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm just... So, so is this 70 people wanting to offload their dogs or people looking for dogs or a mix? No, it's, it's offloading dogs. Um, people don't tend to adopt dogs at Christmas and that's what gives us another problem. We've got, we've got um, you know a backlog of dogs sitting in the charity, then Christmas comes and everybody asks us to take more. And this year we've been hit with flu and, you know, all the other stresses and strains of Christmas. We all have jobs, families, etc. We're all voluntary workers. We're not paid. But when you said, what is it like for you? I'll tell you what it's like for me. People phone me up and they immediately expect that I will listen to their problems and resolve their problems and be nice. And I tell you what, on Boxing Day, I wasn't nice. Uh. I was absolutely furious with this person who wanted to get rid of the puppy. But you can't say anything, you know? I'm astonished, Cathy. I won't lie to you. You've completely flabbergasted me there. With, with, with those numbers, and, and I'm impressed by how you've really spoke... You, you know, you've not, you, you've not flannelled that up at all. And, 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 and the fact that these people are... Come, see, I, I've got to, you know, I've got to lay my interest on the table here. I'm a, I'm a dog lover, I'm a dog owner. Uh, and I don't understand how, you know... I, obviously, there are 
extenuating situations at times but sometimes to me when I hear and I read about it and I don't want to sit here as a judge jury or whatever people get a dog they don't know what they're getting into and then they think oh it's all right we'll just bundle it off to the dog zone or you see them for sale on the internet two or three weeks later got this can't manage it but we'd like the we'd like what we paid for it back and you can have it you're absolutely right. I went to an internet site this morning, just one internet site where you can buy things. There were 18,000 dogs for sale on the one internet site. You know, there's half a dozen stray dogs pounds in the Yorkshire area. There's about 700 strays waiting for homes. There's 19 rescue centres in Yorkshire, and if you take out the big boys, Dogs Trust and RSPCA, there's probably, um, in the small rescues alone over 2,000 dogs waiting for homes. It, it, it really is. And then when you see all the breeding, indiscriminate breeding of any breed bred with any breed to get this year's designer puppy. What can people do about it, Cathy? Well, I feel, genuinely feel, that Britain doesn't care. I've been doing this work in the rescue now for 10 years. You know, I'm 60 years old. I left work at 50 to do charity work, and I'm nearly dead. I have a lot of medical issues brought upon by stress. And we're banging the same old drum, and people don't listen. And in a recession, people will breed. Of course they'll breed. Anybody will breed dogs to get money, because these puppies are very expensive. You know, a chihuahua crossed with a poodle, crossed with a cavalier, crossed with God knows what, you know? And in a recession, of course, people want to make money, and I can't judge them for that. But the whole place is flooded with dogs. Absolutely flooded. Cathy, are we a nation of dog lovers? Well, the statistics may indicate that, because there's over 7 million dogs owned in the UK, and you think, yeah, there's all these fantastic um, television programmes uh, about dog ownership, and... You would think so. There are billions of pounds spent on dogs, but, and it is a big but, the problem of the stray dogs in this country and the dogs that are in rescue homes is an, a Britain's biggest secret. It is not uncovered. It is not looked at. You know, people don't know about the dogs in the stray dog pounds and in the rescues, and they don't consider it because it's much better to get a designer puppy. Some of these dogs I often read and hear about are on almost a canine death row, aren't they? Yes, and that's, that's not really to be um, exaggerated, to be honest, because the stray dog pounds try really hard to get the dogs homes. Um, very few are actually put to sleep in reality because if homes cannot be found and the owner of the dog cannot be found, then there is a route into the rescue world. And dogs are being transported up and down the country by volunteers from stray dog pounds into rescues all over the place to desperately try to save lives. Tell us about... Uh, we've not particularly got you on, Cathy, and I'm ju just asking you this based on what you've just been telling us. We've not particularly got you on to tout for prospective owners and the like, but if, if someone comes to you interested in, in, in homing a dog, what kind of process do they have to go through? Well, the website, westyorkshiredogrescue.co.uk, there's photographs, there's comprehensive descriptions and videos. The dogs are housed in foster homes. We don't use kennels. So we can assess a dog, we can demonstrate to people what the dog is like in a family home, and they can come to visit the dog, talk to the foster. We very carefully explore the lifestyle and circumstances of the owner and match that to the personality of the dog. And we always ask for this 16-year plan. You know, what is your lifestyle? What is your stability? What is your financial stability? And we ask those questions. And I suppose we're a little bit rude in a way, because we ask quite personal questions. But the life and the happiness of the dog long-term is in our hands. If you wanted the BBC Radio Leeds listeners who've, who've heard you speak very passionately um, about something that you're obviously very passionate about, to take away a, a key message, if you will, from, from what you've said this morning, Cathy, what would it be? Just if you're going to adopt a dog, 
really think about it carefully and please consider rescue dogs. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, part of that has astonished me. Bits of it have surprised me, and sadly, a lot of it hasn't. I know. Thank you very much, Richard, and, and uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Yeah, Happy New Year. Just uh, give us that website address again, please. www.westyorkshiredogrescue, that's all one word, westyorkshiredogrescue.co.uk. Kathy Trout there speaking very, very passionately. Uh, in fact, I tell Kathy, you know, I'm, I'm, I keep winding this interview up, but I, I will get lynched if I don't actually ask you about the particular dog we mentioned in the introduction, the little, the little Cairn Terrier. He's got a happy home. Brilliant. We've tell us about it. cuddles and treats and a very nice family. Oh, brilliant. Um, somebody around most of the time and another dog to play with. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, well, that's a, well, that's a nice way to end on, on what, what you know, I know it's a very difficult situation, but that's a, a nice way to end that. So there we go, that's Cathy Trout, and the Cairn Terrier has been rehomed, which is great news indeed. You're listening to BBC Radio Leeds. Be interested to see what you thought. As I say, some of that surprised me, parts of it didn't. Some of the stats astonished 70 calls, 70 people, just and... and just in that particular area, West Yorkshire Dog Rescue, obviously they they facilitate a certain area. There are small independent ones. There's the RSPCA, there's the, there's the Dogs Trust. 70 people looking to offload a dog a day. Amazing, isn't it? Can't quite take that in. Um, are we a nation of dog lovers? I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. It's my dog's birthday tomorrow. He's three. Happy birthday, Brady. Always listens to me in the kitchen. Him and me dad listen every day, and that's about it. I do, <laughs> I do realise that. So I'll say happy birthday to him on the... Am I really saying happy birthday to my pet pooch on the radio? Yes, I am, and I'm not so bothered. Uh, if you'd like to talk to us about that, you can do 0345 303 333. Text leads to 8133. Kathy's right, it is expensive. Especially if you, my dog has got a... Um, uh, a selective palate. So we're having to splash out on this dry dog food, which is quite expensive. He's insured, so we don't get lumbered with a big vet's bill if he gets ill. We flee and worm us and, and all this kind of thing. And if you fancy a night away, you've got to factor in the, the, the dog kennel costs. Um, so there we go. That's where we are with dogs this morning. 0345 303 333. Money as well, if you please. Uh, on 0345 303 333. Text leads to 81 treble 3. Uh, if you'd like to talk to us, if you're going to have more or less money in your pocket this year while you're calling while you're texting we're playing the supremes and i hear a symphony you've given me a true love 